This meeting of the uh, Reading Municipal Light Board of Commissioners is being videotaped to the RMLD office at 2.30 Ash Street. The meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television systems in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. We read our code of conduct. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the inputs of hearing public comment and discretion of the chair on its items on the official agenda as well as on items or items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions and comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in, in all public comment or ensuing discussion. Right, just a few items tonight. Um, I have more from Mr. O'Rourke than Mr. Pacino for the, for the chair tonight. I've ascended, <laughs> moving up one chair, so uh, and Mr. Uh, O'Rourke is away. Mr. Talbot is with us tonight, even though originally he was going to be away, I was told. So, all right. Um, we have no representative from the CAB tonight here, and, and we obviously have no public comments, either nobody from the public to comment, so. Let's move into the um, RMLD board member at the CAB meeting. Uh, I attended the last CAB meeting, uh, at which point the main item was the uh, power, the wholesale power supply motion, which we'll be discovering later on. Uh, it was a very interesting meeting. It went one hour and I was out of there. <laughs> so it was a good meeting uh, in terms of that. So, and we go on to the report of the committees. Mr. Hennessy, you're up first on the policy committee. All right, we um, have been meeting recently to go over the drug and alcohol free workplace policy. It's policy uh, number six. And we've now updated this policy to reflect current law, especially with regard to uh, use of certain prescription and non-prescription drugs, including medical marijuana. And so we just uh, brought that up to current law. Okay, very good. So I'd like to vote on that. You ready to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the to adopt, uh, to adopt. modification. What's to it? Adopt, to adopt. Adopt uh, mm -hmm. the motion of uh, the upgraded policy number six. Okay, is that seconded? Second. We move to second. Discussion? I see none. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Oppose that motion carries. Uh, we do have in the agenda a report on the Reading 2020 Working Group. Uh, Originally scheduled Mr. Talib, I understand you were not able to. Yeah, I thought I was going to be able to attend, but I was not. Okay, so. I would be very interested in. It is, it is being broadcast, I think they're rebroadcasting on cable TV, so. You know, we should all watch RC, RCTV, obviously. Hmm. You can see that. Okay, uh, let's take the minutes, the minutes are the next. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to accept as presented? So moved. Okay, second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? I see none. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. Hennessy has volunteered to be the secretary for this meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. So, and then we go to the uh, report of the general manager. Um, motion, what? Yes, okay, yes, was to accept, accept them all. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I just have a couple of announcements. Um, the RMLD ran a financial. Um, informational forum on the, um, the diesel generator uh, turbine um, and uh, the benefits of uh, peak shaving using this type of distributed generation uh, technology. It was held on Tuesday, July 26th at 7th at the O'Leary Senior Center um, in North Ray. Oh, gas. Uh, gas generator, sorry. And uh, we didn't really have anybody from the public come in, although there has been a number of um, town meetings, uh, not, not town meetings, but meetings with the town and um, some working groups that the town put together. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're ready to go. And National Grid has started construction on the lines, and we should have the whole generator in by when? By June, uh, the first of June. Of next year, right. in time for next year's peak. Yeah, I, I did attend that, that session too. I represented the public very well, I felt. <laughs> so, 
And also the uh, CAB representative from North Reading was there also. So. Mark, yeah. yeah. Mark was there too, so. Uh, the second one is the vehicle day. Uh, it's being held on August 8th from about 1015 to 1215, 5 Central Street in North Reading. So anybody looking to attend to enjoy the trucks and vehicles of, of the town. Um, there is no surplus to announce uh, for this meeting. And uh, I don't believe this is meeting in August, correct? Good. Any question from anybody? No. If not, then we uh, next on the agenda is Ms. Burns <coughs> on the power supply. Thanks. Um, I have three slides for the uh, power sp supply report on the month of May. Mm -hmm. um, the first slide here um, depicts the energy breakdown uh, by resource type. Um, uh, the majority of our power is purchased through our uh, ladder and laner approach, or 54.8% of our system energy. Um, as you can see from this slide, our renewable uh, is growing. Uh, we had 11.7 of hydro, uh, 2.8 of wind, and about 0.5 of solar. So that was a, it represents about 15% of the portfolio um, in the month of May that was renewable. Our nuclear was a little less than 14%, uh, and uh, oil and natural gas were about 1.8%. Um, next slide kind of looks at breakdown comparing year to year, May of 2015 versus May of 2016, um, looking just at the renewable portion. Um, there was more hydro uh, that was generated um, um, in, in 2016 than in 2015. Um, in, uh, for the wind resources, we picked up Jericho uh, Wind uh, that came online in October. Um, and we also have Saddleback Mountain, um, which was in the portfolio in 2015. And then the solar piece is the uh, one Burlington project that we have. It's a two megawatt solar array that we're buying the offtake of that. Um, and that just came online um, at the end of last year as well. So this is the first year that we're actually getting um, energy from that resource. Um, and then the final uh, slide takes those resources by type and looks at the average cost uh, for the month of May. Uh, the average cost of our portfolio um, came in around a little over three and a half cents. Um, and this is representative of the, um, you know, the highs of nuclear, which is uh, six mils or 0 .006 for the fuel component um, to the uh, wind at the 0 .0998. So, the wind and solar are a little higher, and that's what we expect with solar. Um, when, uh, the directive that we've been given is to review those projects and try to find com economic and competitively effective um, renewables to include in the portfolio. Um, so that um, that concludes that report for me. Can I? Can I ask a question? Where do those directives come from? I might, maybe I should know that. Um, from Colleen, and we also have a, a, a sustainable a sustainable policy. Um, in the portfolio that picks target levels that we're trying to achieve. Um, and so between the policy and Colleen's directive, um, we, we try to incorporate those into the portfolio. Okay. Okay. Questions? Any other comments? Okay. Are you doing the, uh, yeah. um, the wholesale power supply tour? Correct. Okay. Um, as Phil had mentioned, uh, we met with the CAB on July 13th to review this laddering layering approach. Uh, this was included in the packets and it's included in the board. Um, this is our contract timeline and just to kind of give you a little high level overview, that first line or the blue section of the, of the graph uh, indicates contracts that we have in our portfolio that we're, uh, that we're secured through the laddering and laying approach. The green line is the line that we're talking about tonight. Those are the um, monthly amounts of on-peak and off-peak power that we're, we're potentially going to pr procure um, next month um, if this gets approved by the board. Um, and then the last year, uh, the, the, the orange line, uh, the third line down, is what we have left to procure. So if you look at the timeline, it starts in 2017. These are based on calendar years. So we're looking at 2017, 18, 19, and 20. So for 2017, because we've been doing this repetitively, uh, this is the last portion that we're securing in this RFP. Um, if we go out one more year, we've secured about half of it, 75%, and then in 2020, that's the first portion that we're, we're looking to secure. And so we're staggering these and taking advantage of the, of the markets and the spot pricing um, in order to hedge the power supply costs. 
Um, when, uh, when we first put this together um, back in the beginning of July and looked at uh, the amounts that we're going to be securing, we, we assume a certain amount in our spot in, that remained in the spot and market so we can take advantage of those prices. Uh, and uh, so this equates to approximately 270,000 uh, megawatt hours. Um, and that the average cost of that on January, uh, July 6th was, uh, was $41.42 uh, per megawatt hour. Uh, I just ran our, our indicative model again yesterday and prices have come down to $38.52. So that's about an $800,000 savings just going from July 6th to July 28th. Um, so this seems to be a very attractive time to be able to lock in some very competitive prices. Um, if we look at the same proposal, there were different amounts that we purchased last year, but the average cost uh, that we secured was around $47 per megawatt hour. So we're looking at $47 for the four year period a year ago, and prices, energy prices have come down on uh, the forward price curve to uh, under, you know, 38.52 right now. So it seems to be that we're timing the market um, pretty uh, accurate. Mm, mm -hmm. It's great. Okay. Sure. Okay. Questions of the commission? Do I have somebody who wants to make a motion? What's the motion? <coughs> on the agenda. <laughs> oh, I don't have it right here. Okay. Right um, move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners authorize the general manager to execute one or more power supply agreements in accordance with RMLD's wholesale power supply plan for power supply purchases for a period not to exceed 2017 through 2020 and in amounts not to exceed 13 megawatts in 2017, 16 megawatts in 2018, 20 megawatts in 2019, and 23 megawatts in 2020 as presented by the Director of Integrated Resources. To the end of that, I would like you to add as on the recommendation and on the recommendation of general manager. And on the recommendation of the general manager. Mm -hmm. okay. CAB did approve this by a vote of uh, three zero with one absent. One absent. Okay. You second. 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 Discussion. Anybody? No. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed. That motion carries. Four zero. <coughs> Okay, very good. We're up to engineering and operations. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, may I just make one comment sure. about the means given? Yeah. Um, something I forgot to shift the gears from policy meeting. <laughs> um, there was a topic that I brought up with the CAB on the minutes. And I, I'm sure you've noticed that some of the minutes are getting to be seven or eight pages long. Right. Um, it takes staff uh, and myself a significant amount of time to review them. And a lot of the conversations that are reiterated back and forth are repeated and as such. And while I think it's really important that if someone makes a, a meaningful comment that they go on record as saying that, uh, I had asked the CAB if, if you know, we could do minutes traditionally that they would be you know, somewhat consolidated and, um, and, and not verbatim um, you know, as a means of being consistent where our goals of being a little bit more efficient. Um, so certainly if someone said, I'd like to go on record as saying that or they specifically right. want something we can do that, but a verbatim of the, the entire tape is just... Yes, because the purpose of minutes is just really to kind of summarize some of the discussions. They're not, it's not supposed to be a transcript of what everybody says. You know, and I've seen many minutes where, you know, the motion gets made and then the next line is discussion ensued. Yes. Right? You know, if somebody wants to make a, you know, and we approve the minutes, somebody at that point wants to say, gee, I want my line in there, you can certainly amend the minutes and, and put it in at that point. I, I would agree. I, after going through 10 and 15 pages of minutes, yeah. it's, uh, it's uh, take that off your plate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in fairness, you know, to Jeannie, I, I think that, you know, probably before even I got here, there may have been some conversations where the board had wanted things to be verbatim for a particular reason, and then, you know, direction may have been given to Jeannie because they, they want everything. And so I just want to make it clear that we'll, we'll take minutes traditionally, and if if folks want to have things specifically documented verbatim, we can do that as well. And uh, that way we're meeting a balance of, of everyone, but, but sticking with a little bit of efficiency. Okay, thank you. Okay. Very good. I mean, thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm going over the engineering operations report for month of May. Uh, the first <coughs> slide uh, 
shows the capital improvement pro projects, which uh, uh, they show the spendings for uh, each project as well as the year to date uh, total. Uh, you see in the last column on the right. The second slide uh, shows the routine constructions. The first column shows the categories. The second column is the spending for the month of May. And the third column is giving you the year to date spending for each category. That brings the total spending for the month of May to $115,307 and year to date spending to $1,404,284. Uh, under the routine maintenance, uh, basically we have seven maintenance, preventative maintenance program. And the first category is a transformer replacement, which through the month of May, uh, we, spend, we change out approximately 17% of the pad mount transformers. And in the overhead transformers, we changed uh, approximately 13% of the, the ones that we identified as being aged or overloaded. And the pole inspection that was done for this year, as you know, we, uh, we inspect 10% of the poles every year, 10% of the uh, RMLD-owned poles or in the custodial of uh, RMLD, uh, which uh, 172 poles were identified as the condemned or failed, uh, that we replaced all of those poles, and 96 of those uh, we have done the transfer or the transfers uh, were completed by the month of May. This is an ongoing pro process. The next category is a visual inspection of over the lines. So these are the lines that they were visually uh, inspected to make sure there are no pot potential failures or if there are any problems with them to identify and pursue for further actions that need to be taken. Uh, the fourth category is a manhole inspection. Through the month of May, we inspected 397 manholes. Uh, this is a program that we started as of uh, January 2016. And it's really great because we are identifying the problems and also the assets that we have in manholes, handholds throughout, uh, throughout the service territory. And if there are any potential problems or potential problems, we address them. Actually, we have addressed a lot of those uh, uh, as we speak. And I'm very glad that you know we started this program. We still got quite a way to go, but uh, it's a start. Uh, the next category is a porcelain cutout replacement uh, through month of uh, May 2016, 91% completed. We got 257 remaining, they remain to be re replaced. The tree trimming, in the month of May we did 180 spans, uh, which brings the year to date total to 2,461 uh, spans that they trimmed. Uh, technically, uh, generally for every year in the budget we have up to, to for budgeted for 3,900 3, per year, which we got uh, the remaining of that, about uh, 600 uh, span left for the remainder of the year, 2016. Uh, the last category is the substation maintenance that we do infrared scan the substation equipment apparatuses inside the substation, as well as the parks, uh, industrial parks, and we found no problem with any of the equipment. Uh, the next slide shows basically the double poles, uh, uh, which is the, we got 16,000 poles, that's the ownership that we, uh, is, uh, we have 50% uh, of that uh, by owned by uh, RMLD, 50% is the Verizon, but the custodial in our service tour territory is split between us and Verizon. In the Reading, uh, we split between, uh, between Verizon and <coughs> Reading. North Reading is solely R R R RMLD's custodial area. In Linfield and Wilmington, it's Verizon's. The next slide, it's the uh, N. John's report that we share with Comcast and Verizon and, uh, and uh, fi fire department for uh, transfer, so the transfers whenever we have double poles or uh, if the pole gets struck or for one reason or another, we, we, notify, uh, we need to notify the other party to uh, do the transfer. In the, in the town of Linfield, uh, we have four uh, in the month of May. In North Reading, we had 61. In Reading, we had uh, 61. And Wilmington, we had 49. And then uh, under each category, you see how many transfers and how many set poles, sole owned poles that you know we owned that we had to set or the ones that we needed to uh, pull the uh, pole, the pole butt out of the ground which North Reading again is us, but the other communities in Reading is half us, half uh, uh, Verizon, and the other two communities 
uh, Verizon is responsible to remove the poll bot after everybody is transferring. The next slide shows you the reliability uh, indices, SADI, KD, and SAFI, and as you could see, they're all below the national and regional averages. So reliability-wise, we're doing well. Uh, uh, the next slide shows the outage causes that, you know, the, uh, the graph on the right shows you the outage causes for uh, five years average, that you could see the most of the outages were caused by the equipment failure, uh, about uh, 36%, the trees were 30%, and wildlife 21%. Uh, the graph on the left, uh, the pie chart, shows the outage causes that year to date caused as of uh, from January all the way to May, and to May, month of May, which you see the trees were 44%, equipment 26%, and wildlife 20%, and the re rest were human error or weather related or for unknown reasons. So this concludes my report for the month of May. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. You want to go over the bits now? Or no? I have a question. Oh. I don't know if it's directly on. Sure. But we had a number of peak calls and very impressed mm -hmm. by, the, by what, what was going on from RMLD. I just wondered if there was any sense of how maybe that's coming of how the public response shaped the demand curve? Or is it too early to say? Too early to say. Okay. Do we know if one of those days was the highest? Uh, so far today, uh, the ISO's preliminary peak occurred last Friday um, at 1800. They had a peak of approximately 24,000 megawatts. Um, today was another day, and they didn't quite reach 24,000. So. Um, that looks, occurred. It um, looks like the, the annual annual and monthly peak is going to be last Friday, probably. Uh, maybe in August. So right, unless there's a surprise so in August. Correct. But right now it, it, it stands to be currently uh, the 22nd. That wasn't our first peak call, right? The first. No, we've had six of them. Right. We've had right. six of them, so it, it's been continually hotter and hotter. Right. And did there was a 911 call on the first one we got, but then not on the next ones. Well, town halls closed on Fridays. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so uh, two of those occurred on Fridays. Huh. Um, That's interesting. And the, the town hall has to be involved. It's not just a police decision. Uh, well, we were working with, uh, I believe her name was Jane Miller in the town hall, uh -huh. and uh, she was uh, she was helping to coordinate that. I so see. that was my point of contact. Does that go just in Reading or all four towns? Just Reading. Ah, okay. That's interesting. Well, any, so there's no analysis yet. Not, not, not yet. Okay. Okay, very good. Any other questions or comments? No? If not, do we go to the financial report? Thank you. Wendy, you're up. Tonight we're presenting the uh, financial report for May of 2016. For the month of May, the net income or positive change in net assets was $332,716, thereby increasing the year-to-date net income to $3.9 million. The year-to-date budgeted net income was $2.5 million, resulting in net income being over budget by $1.4 million, or 55%. Year to date, the base revenues exceeded the budget amount by $189,000, or just under 1%. Actual base revenues were approximately $21.3 million, compared to the budgeted amount of $21.1 million, showing base revenues to be uh, pretty close to budget and pretty flat. <coughs> Year to date, purchase power base expense was over budget by $1.3 million, or 4.9%. The actual purchase power base costs were $28.2 million, and the budgeted power costs were $26.9 million. The purchase power fuel expense was under budget by $1.6 million. The actual purchase power fuel cost was $29.9 million, and the budgeted cost was $31.5 million. For May, the operating and maintenance expenses combined were under budget by $739,000, or about 5.5%. And the actual operating and maintenance expenses were $12.6 million, 
while the budgeted expenses came in at 13.3 million. Um, it's, we stand consistent with the areas where the budget is still under due to timing, you know, no storms, no major spills, which is, which is really a good thing for us. And overall cash was at $38.3 million. Our operating fund is at $15.1 million. The capital fund has $4.5 million. Our rate stabilization fund is $6.8 million. Deferred fuel is at $5.1 million. And energy conservation fund was $781,734. Year to date, the kilowatt hour sales were 618 million kilowatt hours, which is about 15.7 million kilowatt hours, or 2.48% behind last year's actual figures. That concludes my report. On that chart there, what is, what is the, the one to the right? What is that supposed to represent? It's I could a bunch of small <coughs> cash accounts that we have. We just want to show, you know, all the cash accounts on Okay, on so the it's chart. part of the bigger so we pipe. Have, yeah, part the, of the petty big, cash, okay. the small one. The petty cash that has its waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an expansion <laughs> of that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. That way you could read it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So our expenses are, we're doing quite well. Yes. And that's because, no, there were no major No, No expense. major storms, no um, oil spills, you know, thank goodness. and Because um, everything right. else seemed pretty stable. From right, exactly, Friday. exactly. The audit ongoing at the present time? Oh, yes, it is. So, no, not the audit, but the audit preparation is ongoing. And uh, we're preparing for the auditors to come the week of August 8th through the 12th. So everybody's, uh, you know, revving up for that. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Mr. Fournier is coming back to consult. He is, he is here a few days a week to help us out mm -hmm, okay. to, uh, in preparation of this. Okay. Very good. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Move on to we have some bids. Bids? Sure. And there, go on to the next page. Quite a few bids, actually. Um, yes. <coughs> Let's read the motion, then can we give us kind of the setup? So. So this is the uh, distributed generation uh, RFP 2016 to 24. Suggest the motion is to move that bid 2016-24 distributed generation be awarded to Milton Cat CAT as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager for a total cost of $2,008,538. Okay, is that second? Second. Okay, I mean, you want to give us? Yeah, B Milton Cat basically it was it came out lower. Actually, surprisingly, the compared to the last time that we bid for same uh, size generator, they were three hundred thousand dollars less. Hmm. Okay. Obviously, the reason was that everybody knew each other's price the last time. They right. took lots of exceptions. We pulled the bid out, and uh, we redid them this time. They didn't take any exceptions at all. Hmm. The rest of them they took exceptions, and we basically. Got uh, two and a half megawatts for <coughs> a little under two million, and we're getting an optional seven years warranty because I believe the payback for the unit is anywhere between five to six years, mm -hmm. and uh, we decided to go with the seven years warranty for the labor and parts, uh, not the maintenance. The maintenance is approximately thirty-five hundred dollars per year for changing oil here. That we have to do that anyway. But I think this is a great price, and I am looking great. forward to do this project. It would be, everybody would benefit to at least offset some of the costs of the transmission and capacity, rising costs. Okay. Next motion. Uh, well, no, oh, we have take, to take the vote first. Take the vote. I forgot. Any yes. questions? Any further comments? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Let the record show that carried 4-0. Four, four Go to the next one, please. Move the bid 2017 02 for a 15 kilovolt pad mounted switchgear be awarded to Trayer Engineering Corporation as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager for a total cost of $226,100. Okay, is that second? Second. Me? Again? Yeah, this was the basically, they didn't take any exceptions. There were two bidders, there three bidders actually that they bid went out, uh, I, they, they, they sent a response. And there was Trayer Engineering, GNW, Electric, and Wesco. GNW took exceptions, which automatically they're out. And then this, uh, the second lowest was, uh, the first actually the lowest was Trayer Engineering for 226,000. 
$100. And <coughs> the next one higher at 287196 was Wesco. So these are the switches that we're getting. We started a new program for main maintenance of the pad-mounted switch gears at the parks. These are all 35, 40 years old, and we need to replace them. Mm. So uh, this is what the project is all for. Great. Great discussion. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed, that motion carries on the record show 4 0. Moved at bid 2017 03 for SNC SCADA <coughs> made CX switch be awarded to Westco as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager for a total cost of $114,720. Second. Second. Okay, Again, these switches are for the uh, grid optimization project that we, uh, we have started. Uh, and uh, the lowest bidder was uh, the Wesco with 114720 They didn't take any exceptions. Okay. So. All right. Discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries 4-0. Move the bid 2017-04 for SNC Interrupter Pulse Closer be awarded to Wesco as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager for a total cost of $73,940. Yeah. Second it? Second. Second it? I mean, yeah. uh, this is, the again, uh, Wesco was the lowest bidder for $73,940. Uh, this is the second component of the grid optimization that we need for automating the switches uh, out in the field. And uh, uh, they didn't take any exceptions again. Discussion, okay. questions? See none. All those opposed, all in favor, raise your right hand, please. Again, the motion carries 4 0. Uh, move that bid 2017 05 for hourly rates for professional manpower, vehicles, trade tools, and equipment for underground electrical distribution, construction, and maintenance be awarded to McDonald Electrical Corporation as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager. Second it? Second. Second it? Amit, one more time. Yes, this was the three bidders, uh, McDonald Electric Corporation, Fishback and More, and uh, Electnor Hawkeye LLC. The lowest responsible and respons responsible bidder was an eligible bidder was uh, uh, McDonald Electric for 457422 dollars and uh, we checked the references the ref all the references they came out exceptional and there are these <coughs> are people with over 40 years of experience in doing underground splicing and uh, so we're looking forward to work with them and they're very good great very good any discussion questions i see none all those in favor please raise your right hand that motion carries 4 0. Move the bid 2017 06 for Cooper Power System or compatible meters and equipment for the AMI mesh network system expansion and migration be awarded to Eden as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager for a total cost of $119,531.76. Second. Second. I mean, yeah, this is the basically expansion of the uh, two-way fixed network, the new system that we installed for Club 500. Now we're expanding the mesh to reach out to the other meters so we can get more information for the feeders or the, uh, at the end of the line. So we get the end of the line, line voltage. This was the basically uh, best way to fix the incapabilities of existing AMR ITRON system that it, we got in place. Uh, so this is the continuation of that project. All right. Discussion? Questions? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those please raise your right hand in favor. Again, that motion carries 4-0. Last one. Move the bid 2017-08 for bus insulation at substation 5 be awarded to Powerline Contractors, Inc. as the lowest responsible and eligible bidder on the recommendation of the general manager for a total cost of 57000 Three hundred and thirty-two dollars. Second. Second. And move to second. One last time. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As as you know, Station Five. It's uh, it's uh, one of the oldest substations, approximately 35, 40 years old, and the switch gear is almost at the end of its useful life. 
So we need to keep uh, the system going until we build the new substation in Wilmington. We were purchasing land. Hopefully we are at the final stage of that. So in the meantime, we need to uh, maintain and make sure that it's in good condition to, until we build a new substation. The first phase of that was the SPDs, the joints to the bus that we, it was done by, uh, by, the, by the another contractor. And uh, as we got into it, we found out that, you know, well, there are some joints that they have asbestos. So we had to spot, uh, stop the operation and test them and making sure those are asbestos. So this next phase is the asbestos abatement, which is gonna happen. And then the third one, while we opened up the switch gear, we found out that the insulation of the bus is compromised, sort of. So we just taped them so they're not, it's not gonna fail, but we need to redo that until, like what I said, we need to get this substation going for another uh, two to three years until we build a new substation. And this is gonna prolong the life of the switch and as we build a new substation, we're still gonna keep the substation until you know the equipment are basically are completely obsolete, which we're gonna live with. This is gonna prolong the life. Very good. Any questions, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Folks, that motion carries five zero. Very good. You read the board. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Okay, thank you, Amin. A lot of work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Do we have anything under general discussion? Anybody wants to bring up? If not, our our next meeting will, will be September the 29th, and then October the 27th after that. The Audit Committee is scheduled to meet on the uh, September the 29th. Uh, the Policy Committee, we that's to be announced or to be determined. The fiber option is to be determined, and the CAB is September the 14th, so Gene, you'll have to recruit somebody to go cover that mm -hmm. on the 14th, so. I, I think I'm up for the uh, C the CAB, so I can. Uh, Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> September 14th? September the 14th. Put it right in. Book it. Yeah, email us and we can. Yep. Yeah, we need to report back. The fiber committee dies at the September meeting. Yeah, that's right. I sent out emails, so, so we need to meet before then. So what's the date of the September meeting? September the uh, so let's do it in early September. All right, well, let's have to keep this date. Yeah, early September probably better. Okay. And how about yeah, the, um, August is bad. Yeah, how about uh, policy? Um, well? when, when the department get back to us, and when, when do you think it will be back to us? I'm trying to get some things out next week or a week after, but probably the first. Okay. If everybody's busy in August. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. There's nothing else. I will entertain a motion to go in executive session. So moved. Okay. And the motion was move the board, go in executive session to approve executive session meeting minutes on March 31st, 2016. Discuss strategy with, with respect to collective bargaining and return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second? Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Poll the board, Mr. Hennessy. Mr. Pacino, aye? Aye. 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 Very good.